Recently, I did a news release uh, where our detective bureau made multiple arrests on vehicle burglaries and some arsons, and I alluded to a concept that we uh, prescribe to here called intelligence-based policing. And what intelligence-based policing is, uh, the best way for me to describe it would be an analogy. And everybody uh, knows what a standard uh, bathroom looks like in America. You have a sink, a mirror, um, a toilet, and either a tub or a shower. And if you were given the task of cleaning it with the lights off and you couldn't see, you could fumble your way through it. And if I turn the light on, you could do a much better job. And that, in a nutshell, is how I equate intelligence-based policing versus the old-fashioned shotgun approach where you just go out and go get them. And how that relates is in the days um, prior to probably 2002 or 2003 here at the Cape Coral Police Department, we would um, gather intelligence uh, very rudimentary and, for lack of a better word, go out after our, our roll call or our briefing and talk about some of the crime trends and go to our areas and try to clean them up uh, with the lights off, if you relate back to that earlier story. Since 2002, when we really modernized and computerized our uh, crime analysis unit, they're able to gather things much more timely uh, at the click of a mouse or a push of a button. The old-fashioned sharing with our detectives who interview people, the patrol officers who are the eyes and ears on the street, and that last component that's often overlooked are those relationships that you build with the citizens. When those are all put together, that is essentially turning the lights on. So when you go out to clean up a neighborhood or, or uh, police a zone, if you will, you're able to do it much more effectively like that story I told you in the beginning of cleaning a bathroom with the lights on. You can see what you're doing, you're a little bit more guided and focused, and the results, I believe, speak for themselves. Um, to begin with how intelligence-based policing evolves, we'll go through an A to Z flowchart. And the first uh, peg on that would be a series of crimes that are related. And how do we know they're related? Officers respond to a, to a scene. Uh, we'll take a burglary ring, for example. A couple of burglaries occur, uh, some unlocked vehicles are hit in a neighborhood. Our officers will go out, they'll take an initial report, and in that report they'll detail the method of operation, was it unlocked, uh, did they leave anything behind, did they target specific items, specific times of the day, any type of similarities. We'll get statements from victims, witness uh, statements on a canvas, and put all of that intelligence together on a police report and it gets submitted. That police report goes in two different directions. It goes to our crime analysis unit to really drill down and get uh, a lot of those factors that I just spoke of. And the other direction it goes is to our investigations unit where they will actually start to uh, put feet on the ground and, and try to solve these cases. Well, what we do when we get enough of those is patterns start to emerge, times of day, days of the week, um, different, uh, a picture starts to come in, into focus, if you will and rather than sit on that information, we share that with the police officers that are out on the street that are out patrolling anyway. But if they're given a little bit of a direction or a heads up as to where something might be happening or who to, to look for in a particular area, you start to see results. And such as we had this past week where our officers were in a particular area based on this intelligence that we've been collecting and gathering and that picture's coming into focus and that last piece of information, that relationship that we have, where the citizens know to call us when there's anything out of place, they did that. Within minutes, we had these suspects caught, and we solved dozens of burglaries that way.